Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna help you pass the Security Plus exam. Hey gang, it's Ron from itmagicky.com. If you've never been to the channel before, welcome. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and share it with anybody who can benefit. So in this video, we're gonna help you to pass the Security Plus. If you're looking to get into cybersecurity, the Security Plus is a great certification that's gonna afford you a lot more opportunities in the cybersecurity field. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight to the practice exam. Jenny has used an attack that changes the execution path of programs, which triggers a response that damages files, exposes private information, crashes the program, or a mixture of all three. She accomplishes this by overriding memory with the program. What type of attack has Jenny most likely performed? So simply put, a buffer overflow attack is when you send way more data than an application can actually handle. So if it can only handle a certain amount of data, you make sure that you send way more data than that application can handle at one time. Buffers are memory storage regions that temporarily hold data while it's being transferred from one location to another. A buffer overflow occurs when volume of data exceeds the storage capacity of the memory buffer. As a result, the program attempting to write the data to the buffer overwrites adjacent memory locations. Attackers exploit buffer overflow issues by overriding the memory of an application. This changes the execution path of the program, triggering a response that damages files or exposes private information. You're eavesdropping on a secure network communication. You're actively intercepting data and then fraudulently delaying or resending it to misdirect the receiver into doing what you want. What type of attack have you performed? So in a replay attack, you literally just intercept the information and then you replay it at a later time, whether that's passwords or credentials, but you take that information and you replay it for malicious or nefarious reasons later on. A replay attack occurs when an attacker copies a stream of messages between two parties and replays the stream to one or more of the parties. Unless mitigated, the computer subject to the attack process the stream as legitimate messages, resulting in a range of bad consequences, such as redundant orders if you're on a website and things like that. So just remember that a replay attack literally just replays the information. When two devices are connected by Bluetooth technology, you can share someone's information in an unidentified way, which is a kind of hacking known as So the major difference between blue jacking and blue snarfing is that in blue jacking, a lot of times you just send unwanted messages to a user. Blue snarfing takes that a step further. It actually tries to steal the information or data from that particular device that's using Bluetooth. Blue snarfing is a technique employed by hackers to steal data or sensitive information from devices connected to a Bluetooth connection. This particular approach is common to desktops, mobile computers, smartphones, tablets, and personal digital assistants or PDAs. Hey gang, before we go any further, make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and share with anybody who can benefit. If you are enjoying this, you're going to enjoy our Zero to Hero program even more. If you're looking to get four of the most popular certifications in the industry in under 90 days. Go ahead and jump into the description, click the link and apply to the program. We're accepting applications right now, right now. So just because you apply does not mean that you're going to get accepted. Go ahead and roll the dice, see if you get accepted. And other than that, let's go ahead and get back to the quiz. Jack is an ethical hacker and is set to do a penetration test at 3 p.m. He's been given the keys to the building a complete network map, and a detailed presentation of the devices used on a network. 
What type of penetration test would this closely resemble? So white box testing, most of the times you know something about the organization. A lot of times you may have all the information needed to penetrate that network, but at a minimum you'll have a layout of the network. You'll know how the network is set up, what devices they're using, so on and so forth. As opposed to a black box test, you don't know anything. You don't know anything except the actual target. You don't know how many people work there. You don't know how many devices it is. You don't know what security measures they have. So a white box test is a lot more informative to whoever the ethical hacker is. You have a lot more information as opposed to a black box penetration test. White box penetration testing is a type of security testing in which the internal structure of a system or network is known to the penetration tester. White box testing is often used to pen test internal networks and systems of companies. White box testing is a testing technique where a tester is given access to all internal code bases. Jack believes that malicious queries are being sent to a server. So Jack creates a server that has been configured to hand out non rotable addresses for a certain set of 16 domain names. All devices that are sent to this server fail to access the real site. What's the technical term for this server? So a DNS sinkhole is kind of like a black hole for malicious requests. So if a request is coming from a malicious place, it should get sent to the DNS sinkhole if you set it up properly. So as opposed to those malicious requests getting routed to a actual router, an actual server that is going to be doing something that you needed to do, it's going to be routed to the sinkhole, which is a sinkhole that goes to absolutely nowhere. A DNS sinkhole is used to block malicious DNS requests. Implementation can be done via DNS servers, a firewall or other application or a hosted service. The process works by intercepting DNS queries and comparing them to a dynamic list of known malicious domains. Hey gang, I want you to do me a quick favor. Make sure that you watch my last video that can not only help you get certified, but can also help you level up in IT. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, oh damn well, I did my best. And other than that, I'll see you in class.